Welcome to the 25-8 podcast. Here is part two of our talk with Mr. Zachary Wilcox, who is, uh, like I said in the previous episode, a very dear friend, a very talented individual, and a very accomplished filmmaker. Uh, if you watched the last episode, then you saw the trailer for Hunting Lands, and this boy's got a future. Also, just like with the last podcast, I made the egregious error of not plugging power into the GoPro so our wide shot is not available for the second part of this. So I am going to do the most uncomfortable thing possible and leave Zach on camera the whole time. Without further ado, let's get into part two of our in-depth conversation, our meandering in-depth conversation with Mr. Zach Ari Wilcox. I'm going to give you 30 more minutes and then we're done. What's it at now? <laughs> An hour. Jeez. <laughs> I need two just to get through this. I know. You're going to have to do it fast. Why don't you split them into two, part one, part two? And we could. We'll do it that way. We could. Let's just keep going. We until could. We figure it out. We could. There's enough fucking tangents to make an edit. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so so how do you decide like I'm not going to do the space movie and we're we're going oh, like, to go want, genre it's, different? It's seriously like, it, do you want to just do that one instead? And then I was like, hell's yeah, I want to do that one instead because I can't do this one the way I want to do it. He knows, is, that, is that almost as fast as the conversation <laughs> went? Yeah. No, it was it was a, it was a split moment of like we obviously can't do this thing that we're trying to we're trying to figure out, and we're not and we're and we're not going to figure it out in a quick way, and we want to shoot something you know quick, like like this soon. year soon yeah so <clears throat> so then yeah the flip over happens like he was just willing to you know he Ed, Edwin put his thumb on the scale and was like here we go done and so we so we move forward on that you know he asked. If we're okay with going that way, that's the way he wants to go. Let's go do the other movie. The problem was there wasn't a script for that, so then I had to sit down, write the script. Then I had, like, there's versions of the script, and there's... How much time did you have to write the along. script? I, t I took two months to, to get to the final draft that we ended up, like, So this is the, So this from. is the thing that fascinated me. Where did you write the script? The majority of the script, where did you write? Oh, I was, I was working, so it was on set. Okay, and how did you write it? iPhone 5S. It's one of the best tools in the world. On and that, how many pages was the script? First run was 120 pages. So you wrote a 120 page script no, on set. I mean, I rewrote a bunch of those pages. So realistically, probably like 600 pages worth of writing on, on set. But you're just sitting on an Apple box waiting to make sure nothing catches on fire. You're not there for, you know, like. So everyone, th did, what did, it, did everyone think you were texting all day? Probably. Everyone else is texting all day. So you wrote, so you wrote the entire script on an app on your iPhone. Yeah. That, and you don't have the big iPhone. You have the small. <laughs> yeah. I got the little baby one. Yeah. Uh, it's my favorite. My hand can, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. You look, you look like, you look like, uh, uh Andre the giant holding the Pabst. Yeah. It's yeah, just with your phone. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. It's the perfect phone. <laughs> it's the best thing that they've ever made. Hands down. The iPhone 5S. Yeah. Well, this is an SE. So this is the guts of the 6S put into the five's body. You're like f four years behind. But anyways. This isn't. No, they're still selling this. This, is, right, the mo okay. this is the modern. Go look it up. Okay. So you, but, you, but you wrote the whole thing on, a, on an iPhone. Yeah. And some of it on iPad as well. And then like, and kind of flip flop. Like now, like I was telling you, like I was using Celtex for the longest time. And their app is great. And because of also like all of the other software that they offer. Right. You know, like satellite software that they offer. So like shots and, and, and script notes and things like yeah, that yeah. that you can do in separate apps that are kept separate. It's like, that was great. Now I'm really addicted to like Final Draft as a $10 app and their version of Final Draft for the iPad is like, it's amazing. So can you collaborate with that? Yeah, no, I was sending stuff back and forth. If As long as someone, the other person has Final Draft, you can chuck it back and forth and you can do a revision mode. You can pick what color pages you want to do. So for you're your doing, revision. it's the choice between a $10 app or a $300 computer program. Yeah, you can do the app or you can do it on your computer and the computer is going to cost you 300 bucks. The app is going to cost you 10 bucks and it's, and it's comparable and it's beautiful. And it's, it's, and, and when the, if they hear this, they're going to be like, well, let's charge 250 for it. Thanks a lot. And then and you already wrote your movie, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I already have the license for the app, so I'm good. 
Um, yeah, and I, I. So then two months goes by. So you're writing, writing, writing. Two months you goes by, and I'm, I'm writing, and I'm I'm handing it off between like between Josh Amato and Edwin Stevens, and like they're reading it, and and then giving me notes that I fight about, and then and then it just goes, you know, like the back and forth pretty much constantly happens. So you have that like collaboration going because you know this right. you're going to shoot this, so you're right. like you're trying to make it effective in that internally, draft. yeah. Because nobody wants to go make the shitty the movie that they don't want to make. No, and then we fit, and then we then we get to a point where we're like, okay, let's make this draft, you know, into a movie, and then we started casting, and so from from the moment of Harry's, at, how long was it before that's like you're a month in and Michigan? A half. That's like so it's like a month and a half before we start casting. Then we cast, then we had like, geez, I don't really remember how how this worked out. We were in in January, I think October was when we did all the cat, maybe September, end of September into October we did all the castings and then like table reads and things like that after we'd cast um did table reads did I was trying to keep my two lead actors kind of separated as much as I could so which is which I don't know I probably stopped them from having like any real friendship because (laughs) because I was like you guys don't get to be friends you get to be separated and it's gonna be awkward and weird when you're actually together on set and like that's the way I'm gonna do it and I was having that moment where it's like I wanted to teach Joe gun safety because there's rifles in the film and I wanted to, like I wanted him to be safe handling the rifle. And then after we went and picked the rifle out, I was like, I didn't teach him shit because this thing can't like you can hurt yourself. Well, I mean, you could like bludgeon yourself with it, but it's an airsoft gun. You know? Right. Like his one is like it's just a really fancy model of an airsoft gun. So he's not dealing with the real rifle and I'm not Well, super. I think the great thing in the film is that when he's dealing with it, he's he's carrying it around like it's the first time he's ever carried it around. Yeah, no, yeah, we did. And it worked we, perfect. We had like, I, uh, Marshall, I gave like a cadet training rifle, like the, the two by four with like a freaking pipe right, 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 right. and like an actual bolt on it and everything. Right. But it's a cadet, like it's for doing parades and stuff. Right. And I gave him that to play with a bunch because I was like, you just want to get the hand spacing and like the feeling of that going and being able to like rack the bolt anytime that you want. And and uh and just getting more of a fluid motion with the way you're going to carry this around and he got to a point where he felt like just really natural with it which worked out great and then of course we we did like the real rifle with him it's non-firing you know like it's been made safe and and just went through that process of having like he feels secure and in and in the things that he does in the film some of the stuff he was picking up on the day because we just didn't have a place in in LA to show him how to do these things. Like right. I wasn't in his backyard chopping down his trees and making him lash a skid together and right. things like that. He so just, wait, 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 real quick. I just realized this. We haven't given anyone a synopsis of this film. <laughs> this is all they get. <laughs> do you want me to do like the quick as best as I can? I think, I mean, for the video, I feel like you should, you should throw the trailer in front of it when you throw it up or no, the trailer no, we'll at the, the end of it. Let's put the trailer at the end. Yeah. Or maybe we'll accompany it somewhere. I don't know, somewhere in there, something like you All can right, watch. But for the people who are listening right now and don't don't whoever does it, it's 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 basically about a uh, a, a guy kind of like living off the grid. Um, for for what seems like good reason, you find out later, or at least understandable reasons. Yeah. Um, there's an inciting incident that leads him down a path that you don't know what the outcome yeah, like of eight- it is going to be. Yeah, some, something like 15 <clears throat> minutes into the movie with no dialogue and then you see something and then there's... I mean, it's, re- there's it's, it's, really, it's really brave, if I can make a critique, to, 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 do, to go as long as you do without dialogue and not have it be... What, what is this? You know what I mean? Because like, I, I never really... You notice it for a moment. You're like, oh, nobody's, nobody's spoken in 10 minutes. And then you're like, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, I was hoping that it would work that way. I didn't know if it would or not, though. So everything about that, and, like, and and like it's a, there's a lot of there's there's a lot of disagreement. I mean, the reason why I never I had never written the film was just getting people like pitching the story to him, and they're like, no one's gonna want to watch that, you know. And like it'd be, a lot of people hit hit you on that, like, no movies are supposed to here. Read this book, Save the Cat. It'll teach you how to make a movie, and uh, and then yeah. Uh, or like I, I mean I love Robert McKean and like story, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And, and and I, and I love it, but. But there are there are no hard rules. Yeah, there's know? no rules, man. Like it's like. <clears throat> but I think I think people speak the language of 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 film and television as a visual medium. I think they understand what it means, even if they don't overtly understand what it means. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I think they speak their native tongue and know that like, oh, that shot they just had of the cook and and Hunt for Red October means something. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? And I think and I think that yeah, your and- film like so this is the this is the hard thing for me to to kind of like wrap my head around is that there's a lot of people me included who don't go out and just just Nike it like just just do it you know what I mean like there's there's fear I don't know if there's fear of success fear of ridicule um, it's still the thing of, of like you're still waiting on the money forever like I would have done this movie <clears throat> years and years and years ago if if there had been an option for the cash it takes that one person to go like you seem confident so you had somebody, enough to make you had something somebody who went I mean just having like Edwin just you know like it, it's I mean it's it's a it's a life changing move for him to be like yeah let's do it like let's let's just go and do it and I mean I've, he has something to gain from it but not I, I don't it's know it's more life changing for him than you though isn't it how because 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 it's your idea because you came out with this idea because it because it comes from you it's like it's birthed from you yeah, but that's that's he me. paid your hospital bill. Yeah, but I mean, that, no, nah, that's that. I don't think about it like that at all. I feel like I don't think the architect. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying like like I, don't think I the, look at I don't it think that the way. Architect of the of the Empire State Building is worth anything more than the men died, the who died building it. You know, like but there's but there's people who remember the architect. They don't they don't give a shit about the people who died building it. Yeah, I know, and that's that. That's unfair, isn't it? Yeah, but that that's a, but that's the point I'm saying is like in today's society, it's more beneficial. No, the gains for me, like the gains for him as an executive producer on your, the film, your gains are, are, are career are the same gains. Yeah. So for him, he's got that thing of he wants to have his production company, he wants to have the you know the things, and it's easier for him after having a, a successful film, or at least like a reasonably successful film. Yeah. In this stage that it's in now, it's been doing well. For him, that gain means that he can make more stuff. He can so, continue so, on. So, okay, he can start so, getting money for other things. So then that's can, me making an ignorant statement and needing to retract it to say like yeah. I didn't I didn't look at the homeless guy who doesn't have an address or a shower. No, I mean, and as as like as a DP on the film, <clears throat> he was the director of photography as well as you know. And he comes from Doc World. He told me he, though, right? He, didn't you? Yeah, he does a lot of docs. He actually was a, a lot of the camera parts for uh, the Defiant ones. Oh he, really? Yeah. He, he shot those. He shot a bit of those. Yeah. He did, a, I think, a bunch of the interviews. That was awesome. I'm not sure exactly which parts he shot um, of it, but he's, it was awesome. He's, yeah, he's he's on it. He's in the credits. So for what that. makes you what makes you choose Michigan? Josh Amato had a cabin there. That was it. Yeah, and we were like, oh, we can use the cabin. I was thinking about upstate New York, but the weather's not consistent enough. Yeah, because I was wondering, like, how the hell did you keep it snowy all the time? Well, I mean, that's what it is. It's lake effect snow. You got two two great lakes. Surrounding so you, you. So yeah. you go, okay, we're going to go shoot it in, we're going to shoot it in Michigan. Yeah. We we're decided gonna go shoot, place. You're going to go shoot in January. Yeah. And then you, but you went out there to prep when? Um, we went out and looked at everything in October during actual hunting season. Really? Yeah. Okay. And like had, we wore I mean, high you, visibility safety jackets. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we, you were, you were location and tech scouting and doing all that shit to be like, all right, this scene yeah, will like be here. Yeah, like the second we got the script done, we were doing like the location scouts and we were doing the planning and then it's like, and then I went and hit Amazon and every store I could find and sourced important props and things like that and, and wrote down, you know, we had breakdowns and we had sourced important props. Then there was a full prop list of like all the small stuff that you can definitely get at Walmart and things like that. It right. was supposed to be bought like you know, on the day here and there. And that was always a pain in the ass. Cause it's like, once you really get out of the elements where like there's four vehicles to use and like everyone needs to get to work and as well as someone needs to be buying this stuff. And there's just a lot of logistics that you, you plan out a lot of the things and you're like, Oh, we'll totally have time for this, this, and this. And it's like, you don't realize that the, the and I did realize the sun's only going to be up for eight hours. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like walk out onto this porch of this motel that we're staying at with like the Atlanta motel in yeah. Atlanta, Michigan. And it's like, everybody in the town is amazing. Yeah. You know, just, just like all these great people, everything is, it's, and I would, every morning when I'd walk out, I'd walk out on that porch and it's like bitter cold and amazing. Like instantly, like you're like, you know, if I fell asleep out here, I wouldn't have a nose tomorrow. You know, like right, right. it's so, <clears throat> I don't know. I like it when like the reality of a location really just kind of slaps you in the face with it. It's like, this is today. And you walk out, it's 930 and the sun's not up yet, you know? And you're like, oh, well, we'll wait for that. And then we'll- 930 you know? AM and the sun's not up? Yeah. No, it's probably 830 or something like that. But still- 830 AM the sun's not like up? A, well, it's just, just the sun comes up when the sun feels like coming up. And then it's like- <laughs> You're trying to act like- Well, because they're weird. Because they're on Eastern Standard Time. Oh. And they're so far over there. Oh, are they really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. 
They're they're not on like Central Time yet. How big was your crew? Or maybe they're. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't, they were Eastern. Yeah, crew crew was seven seven people in the actual crew. What does sound that mean? Guy, sound guy. So seven people at any given time. But the sound guy we actually swapped out. So we had my buddy Mike Ohini, and Mike Ohini got me his friend Phil Jackson to cover him while he was off shooting Polaris commercials. Okay. So he was the snowboard the company. S- no, the, snow- the snowmobile, snowmobile company. company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and you know like and I grew up in a ski doo family, so it's like Polaris is disgusting to us. No, I'm joking. It's like it's like Canada it's Arctic Dry Cat. Schweppes. Arctic Cat we don't like. <laughs> I think I don't remember. <laughs> So like, it's been a while. I know we don't like Arctic Cat. So you have seven guys, seven seven males, seven females, mixture of both. Actually, uh, so so not as crew. Two women. The rest is like just a bunch of men. And like 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 just burly men. Just no, not not none, really. none of them are burly. No, no, I think they weren't. Uh, they weren't. They weren't prepared for the elements. Oh, I don't know. I feel like when we got back into it, all of a sudden we were like, I love winter. It's like my, <laughs> you know, and my, and Christy hates that. The wife, she hates the fact that I love winter, I think. Really? She, yeah. She hates the fact that I like, if uh, that if I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't, if I'm going out, it's, I'm going out with hypothermia and not with heat stroke. Like that's <laughs> just the slow, quiet death. <laughs> automatic. <laughs> Like I'm taking it. I'm walking in. Sleep. I'm walking in on my stumps after the other parts have all frozen <laughs> off. And, you know, like. Um, what was the hardest? What was the hardest thing? Of, what was your shooting schedule? Shooting schedule was relatively easy. We didn't have it. Like we weren't super packed. We knew that we were gonna do walking in the woods and things like that. But there was there wasn't any downtime. There wasn't anything to go do. You know, there wasn't like a trailer for the actors to go back to or anything like that. Like they had to be there in the elements with us. They were suffering it out the same way we were. So how many days did you shoot? Uh, 15 days total, we scheduled 18 and we, we knew that we were going to have like rain days, things like that. And things that we couldn't get around, you know, like not rain, but like freezing rain and sleet and things like that, that weren't going to look great on camera. Right. So we tried to stay away from those. What'd you do with those three extra days? Did you like go get pickups or you just like, ah, fuck it. We're good. We had some of the stuff that we wanted to do pickups for and things like that. But most of them just ended up being like an extra off day for the weekend and things like that. So, so you we, were gonna, you were gonna do like eighteen consecutive days? No, we had always had weekends in there, but we just added extra. You know, like we had one Monday where we couldn't work because it was you know freezing rain. So you work Saturday. So no, we didn't. We we just we just, did a, we we just, just had a four day week. We just cut the day and then pushed that day to the. We had three days at the end of the schedule, so it was always going to be fifteen days of shooting. But we eighteen had days three scheduled. empty days in our eighteen day schedule. People were paid out of that eighteen days. Everything else was done out of that eighteen days. We knew that we'd have to push things to, to the latter part of the schedule. What was if we couldn't get them? What was the what was what What do you think was the? Uh, I mean, this is your first feature, right? Yeah, as a writer director. Yeah, as a yeah. Well, you directed it. <laughs> yeah. So it's the, not first, like the first feature you worked on. You've seen other things I've directed. I've brought them over and like shown. Them. I don't. You're. It's so like out there. Like your shit was so that's why that's why it was such a like that's why it's such a surprise to like see the film that I saw last night that I saw half of like six weeks ago. That's um, that that's what I'm saying though. That's uh all of the short films I showed you? Yeah. This was in there. No. I'm just, but, <laughs> I um, saw it years ago. <laughs> yeah, you saw it. No, the, but then but then like to have you do like You remember I, all the silent films, man? I used to do the silent films and they were always Your shit's like, your shit's just like you, you don't care. And I just burn them on a DVD and like there's so much of everybody's like, oh, how much of it's on YouTube? And I'm like, I made so much stuff that I just showed like 10 people. And yeah, like- that, that's, had, that's what you did. You just came over. We had a screening, <laughs> you know, we'd sit and watch Zach's stuff. And at the end of it, we'd be like, well, that happened. Yeah. What was, <laughs> what was that all about? What was that? Should we talk? to? Is there a problem with Zach? Should we talk to him? A lot of them had people duct taped to chairs. I realized that was like a super theme. Yeah, I like the I like the idea of people getting duct taped. I think there was one. But then they were never like beaten while they were duct taped. No, it was just like I want you I want you immobile. (laughs) Yeah, like you have to sit here and put up with this right now. It's like it's like a safety blanket for a dog, but you're duct taped. We had the one with like the card game that we shot. Seriously, it's a ten minutes. We shot the whole thing. It's like a four minute long short. It's shot in ten minutes. It's black and white because because black and white's cool, and. uh, And in the end, he's taped to the chair, but we didn't have enough tape. So the tape is just over the front of him. He's not actually taped to the chair. And then there's a wide (laughs) shot where you can see that he's not taped to the chair. (laughs) 
And I'm like, how did I let that? And I, like, but that was the thing. It was like, I'd shoot the whole thing and then I'd be like, well, I, you know, we shot it in 10 minutes. We're going to cut it in 10 minutes. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do for music? It's like, well, you know, we're, we'll, uh, we'll throw in a Miles Davis track from Sketches of Spain and we're yeah, done. We're good. What was, what was the, what was the biggest surprise for you making this and being in Michigan, you know, a foreign land? Doing something that you're really like you've experienced, um, but you were never people, the captain of the ship. The Michigan people and I are the, our kindred spirits. I feel like that was your biggest surprise. Oh no, I wasn't surprised by that at all. No, I'm saying that's like what it, was your when, biggest when like, like production flying. surprise, like good or bad, where it was like, oh, this ended up being really easier. Like we never thought about this and created such mm-hmm. headaches. I I expected people to really, I expected the crew to really hate it, to like revolt. Yeah, and I was super surprised when they all loved it. Just the whole experience of making so it. I was so surprised when they, when like, cause this is all people like friends of, you know, like friends of Ed's and friends of mine and people coming out. So all you guys are calling to, in favors, but at the same yeah. time compensating people. But I mean, and they're all people that like, it's like the thing is my, my friend Brooke, want, you know, like she came out and she's, she's got an actor on the film. Unfortunately, we like one of the, one of the most terrible backgrounds to any of the shots in the film, which me- meant it got cut is her side of the coverage as she's selling him the ticket in the. Movie theater. Oh, why? Because the be- the the behind her was terrible. Well, because behind her it's just all the freaking stuff for the movie theater, like butter bottles and like just right. terrible. Th- and we're like, this is not the vibe here. So it's like you just see the side of her face and her dialogue that's in it, it's like I was like, just do your do your own. <laughs> I was like, and I was and I was threatening to name her character Beulah and like just being <laughs> a real jerk and. uh which is all I do to bro. I don't know why she hangs out with me. Like I'm just so. Uh, well, uh, you're not. I don't think you're a rotten friend. You have empathy. I'm so. I'm. So, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, no, just just like I'm just mean to the it's like, and it's not. All of them are things where I think they're funny, but it's like. I think. I think. I was the only one who would like laugh at your shit because I was like, everyone else is like, he just offended the entire table, and I'm like, ah, you're not. You're not getting it. Yeah. You're no, not getting it's it. It's not. You didn't consume it right. Yeah. You made the joke about you. Yeah. That's it's not about you. Yeah. That's all sarcasm. And it, it, there's actually something deeper there. <laughs> yeah. Don't be offended. Look inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start making jokes about you when it matters. <laughs> now, <Nah, that's it. laughs> So then. I've used that one before. What was, what was a terrible thing about being there? I mean, you had, you had pros, dude, with you. Is there hmm. something that was just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, did you actually go into the trenches and have a pleasant experience? Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the I enjoyed it. There was definitely like a lot of like I said, the art department stuff falling through the cracks. But that was just because no we we thought that in our minds we were like somebody will just run and buy that stuff. You know? So, so the lesson is don't assume anything. And yeah, make zero assumptions. You know, like and uh, and there was like insurance debacles where it was oh, like, oh really? Yeah, where it's like just one phone call that didn't get made, and then all of a sudden you're like dealing with this, and it's it's like you're you're having a wildfire phone. But it's all the stuff that happens on every production except for ours wasn't like, you know, Marshall just broke his leg. You know, like it wasn't right. things where it wasn't the sort of thing. Yeah, it they weren't. They were bi- they were big fires for us in the moment, but they weren't they weren't things that like ruined everything. There's one miserable day where it was just bitter cold. There was no cloud cover. It wasn't snowing, so it was even colder than normal. Right. And uh, and we're out on the the main road with the the scene where where the big rig comes by, you know, and like everybody still talks about right. that. Where we're just like waiting on these big rigs to like go by so we can catch one at the right spot. No, Vict- my so Victoria last night leans over to me and goes. Did I do the bur- I, she hates my Russian accent oh, but yeah. she goes uh, she goes uh, that was a very good shot did they did they plan that and I was like I think that's a happy accident I no, think they, they got going, lucky they were going by all and day and then you and then and then you just totally fucking shot me down when yeah. I was saying to my fiance no. I was like I was like Zach I don't think Zach planned that it's like when you have the menace of dirt trucks driving by all day long you're like you might as well I'm, use them. I'm using that yeah yeah <laughs> like that's going in this could be advantageous but it yeah. but isn't it strange how that's the shot where people are like well, that, people that talk that about shot because it it's just things that are natural things that you think about and where where like in a regular movie no cars would go by the whole time they'd 
only be in the other lane going by right. at a distance so that they never, so that it's not something that like it's it, it, the character that you're watching currently is completely blocked by this, you An know, or like he's not in focus for, for a minute and a half right there. <laughs> it's like on purpose, like you're looking at, at like tree branches and deer antlers and like a, a, a majority of the movie is to show you like the nature as did part, you, yeah, but did your crew think you were fucking nuts body. for doing that? No, Ed was on board entirely. He loves the idea of being able to play around with the cinematography. So that like that works great. In fact, a lot of the times it would be the thing where I'm like, okay, cool. So we got that. Now let's get one where we rack on time like a normal movie would do. And, and you know, like then when you see it in the edit, every, the insecurity of like being worried where it's like we'll get one of awesome and then we'll get one of standard. And then we'll see what we use later right. on because we'll know if it's good or bad. Right. Was definitely a thing. But like landing in a spots and being like, you know what, here's how we're going to light this. We're going to block it to the light and then we'll fill in if we need to. But if we don't need to, we don't we don't touch it. You know, there's no reason to, to you know, well, I don't want to be like, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, but what, like, did, you, what did you shoot on? A C300 Mark II. And what, how did you like what what codec? Oh, God, it was C log. It was a cannon log. And it was it was all four K four two two ten bit. Yeah, no twelve. It was twelve. It's twelve bit, right? I don't know. I don't own a Canon. I think that's what the camera runs. I think it's twelve bit because the the first one without the four K was, was. I mean, is that a was, was that a, a conscious bit. decision? Like, I mean, it's about the body. <clears throat> so it's the body of the camera. It's the way airflow works in the camera. And when so you're, I didn't, so when you're dealing with like dry air and then the humidity of of the, the cold. camera melting melting like snow and things like that are falling on and everything right. else. You take a lens off and you fog the sensor on a red because the red sucking air past the front of the sensor. The Canon sucks all the air past the heat sinks on the back of the sensor board. Well, it, 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 what would you say to a DP who's like, well, you know, you just fucking might, you should just shut it on red. You should have just shut it on red and had a tent that you bring it into specifically and then you wait 20 minutes for it to cool back down to the native temperature so of what, the I land mean, that So it's what, in do you, what, what do you have so to say to people can, who are like, you know, why, you know, like the diehards, like the people who, who, who just won't acquiesce. No, I mean, I get the idea that you really like the red and stuff and that, you know, like, or like even an Ari or like and an that, Alexa or and that Janard is like the coolest dude ever. Cause he made those NASCAR sunglasses. sunglasses. Yeah. But he made those NASCAR sunglasses. <laughs> that's what they were. It was like a line across the top of your head. And then like the lens cut out was like the one they started on. So right. whenever I think all I can think about is like, I'm like Kyle Na- Bush NASCAR, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, look at, look at, uh, Daryl Waltrip out there with his sweet sunglasses. His sweet Oakley's. So what, but what do you, what, how do you, how do you counter that argument to there's be no, like, there's no such thing. The medium, like, sure. If, if, if the, if the, if the main point of the entire project is that is the sharpest, most highest resolution friggin' image on the face of the planet, which is not the reason why people like the Alexa. They like the Alexa for the tone and things like that, but you can obtain that tone from almost anything. And with a good colorist, you can go even further than you ever thought you could, you know? So it's like. I mean, that camera right there. Can you shoot a feature on that camera? Right yeah. there. Easily. Easily. I'd rather do it in 4K and, and know that I can do a 4K release eventually, for sure. You know, like I'd rather be ahead on the actual like wideness of the resolution just to fr- future proof it a little bit because film was future proofed. You know, you can drop film over to a 4K and it still looks like the film that it was shot on. You know, do you, do, so what. It, 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 you were telling me too that you already shot like this is for the nerds like you shot with a LUT on it didn't you no, I mean we decided what we wanted like to, you're look in to look Canon like log? We, we built it in the Canon log with our settings so we had like the flat looks that we wanted that was like it was kind of that Canon faithful from from the DSLRs like back to the 5D yeah, Mark 1 no, 2 no, and like like a 70. like a T2i really friggin like look you know where really? it's like it's just the it's it's not super contrasty yet and like Would you that. shoot a film on a T2i? Sure. If it, if it did 4K or at 1080. I'd shoot it at 1080 if if if, if that's But you're a cinematographer, you would you shoot had. it, you would shoot it on that? You shoot you shoot on what you have. You shoot it once you can afford. You shoot it once you can get. I mean, if the thing that's stopping you from making a movie is that you can't afford to shoot on the camera that you want, then you're not a filmmaker. <laughs> what was your post production like? It's like, oh, it was nuts. I was working. I was back on People Magazine Investigates when that was happening. So like a lot of it was just like I did the. I took the month off to get through, um, to get through the edit, and that was a lot of me <coughs> like definitely overbearingly over our editor Mered- Meredith Mantic's shoulder where I'm like just 
I don't know, a raw nerve because that's like the that's the worst part. I've never sat in on any of that. You know, like I've been on set for thirteen years, but I haven't. You know, like I have well for t- ten years, twelve years, somewhere in there. But you never sat in like the edit room I've working in, on an edit. I've you because you helped, always did it. I've helped out on stuff, and then when I edit my when I when I make stuff, I edit it myself. You know, so it's like it's not it's it's definitely like and she's a fantastic technician too. So it's like she's pretty quick with everything. And then a lot of the stuff ends up being like, and you're having like these disagreements about the way that deliberate pacing should work and can it be super long and will people still retain interest and things like that. And like those arguments are the arguments that you have to have. You have Because I think you were pushing the, the ragged edge you of, have that, to, of that you moment. You have to have those discussions. I'd like to go an hour over what we have right now. And if you give up, you didn't deserve to watch the movie. So the movie's what, 82 minutes? You, you 83 would, minutes. I'd love to make it four hours long and just see see who's still watching at the end. Is that, that, do, you really, do you really mean that? I don't really want to do that. Because <laughs> even you wouldn't sit but, through it. <laughs> but people deserve it, you know? <laughs> um, you deserve that. You deserve that thing. You deserve that. Uh, well, think about it, like the first time that you ever saw like Aronofsky. Like if you saw Pi. If yeah, that was the first, Pi, yeah. like, first Aronofsky movie that you ever saw. You're going to have the pacing on that's nuts. It's deliberately nuts. Yeah. But it's so weird. And it's a, it's like, and, and, and it's an achievement coming from like a, you know, like novice like, level to leaving that and be like, well, I got a master's in that weird shit now, you know, like yeah. <laughs> that just taught me some stuff. So what was it like sitting, we, how many arguments did you have? Uh, I mean, or were they, or they not arguments? No, they were d- just discussions that would turn, that would turn into, to, discussions that would turn into things where it's like, do we go this way or do we not go this way? And certain things that like I'd make concessions immediately and then there'd be other things and there, you know, you like, then you put a producer in the room and then you're trying to figure out exactly what it is. And there's like certain drops of just things where you're trying, you're just trying to figure out a pacing for the film. That's all you're trying to do. You know, you're just trying to figure out the, you're trying to figure out the way that it's meant to work. Like what the, what the tempo is, like what the, like like the beats, when are they going to hit? Yeah. And, and trying to, trying to figure all that (laughs) stuff out and it's complicated and it's not meant to be easy. If it was easy, then everyone would do it. Everyone would be an editor, you know? So does she, so does she, we'd we'd seriously be like, I got, you know, 75 cents a day. You willing? And people would be like, well, I mean, that's what everyone's paying these days. So, (laughs) you know, editors are, uh, Oh, did she, I mean, was she, did she, she worked a month straight, like 12 hour days cutting that movie? No, not 12 hour days. And she had like some vacations and things in there. And I think it was like a month and a half. I mean, like we, we took time off. I had to be, I did, I went and got married during the time when we were doing the edit. Really? Maybe. No, I got married before we did the edit. So then, so then. What so, the hell did I do? I went and did. I don't know. Oh, no, exactly. I, did, I did get, I did get married. Just not. It was the second time. Thanks for the invite. It was um, my second marriage in upstate New York. So, so after, so after you get like a picture lock, right. And you're like, all right, we don't want to change shit. Like what, what, like color sound, like what is, what's the then process they just of that? It. I just got, I seriously got like looks at what the color was, you know, like I'd get sent like, you know, links to, to watch things and I just watch it. Color. I, I signed off on almost everything. There were a couple of things that I very much meant to be like bright yellow and freaking deep blue and things right. like that, that. Well, you were telling got, me about that night scene. Yeah, that got balanced back out to white because in his, because in the colorist mind, he's like, okay, I need to even everything to zero and then we'll go and we'll right. color. And I was like, no, what you saw was what it's supposed to be. Put it back, you know? And because it was the only, it was it was like the old street lamps that had the, what was yeah, it, so sodium, sodium vapor. vapor? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's it's, like, and it has an orange. It has like an orangey yellow to it. Yeah. And I was, and, and he it, went back to zero. And it, it, yeah, he took it. He took it down to even, which is what you're supposed to do. And I was like, that's the exact. So he had to like recolor back to what I was <laughs> asking for. And uh, but when I first saw it, I was like, does he not know that that's you know like is it, had that? Did moment you get where, Artie? <laughs> no, I, I almost. I don't know. So then what? So then when it goes to like how how do they how, like do you sit in a se- like a spotting session or do you? No, I mean, oddly enough, it was like just you like, just send out like a, what's it, an OMF or whatever. And then. No, they, they chucked the whole film over to Tyler who was doing our color. So it's like. He did the sound too? He didn't do the sound. Oh God, now I'm going to like forget names entirely. I, mean, I, mean, I don't care. I don't, I, don't care the names. I don't care the names of, but like, what's the process of like a sound mix? It's 50% of your movie. Yeah, no, and they the, the Edwin actually was there for most of that while I was working on People Magazine because I needed money. I was going to die if I didn't like pay the rent, you know. So 
I had to keep going and I had So is he updating you? He's like scene one through seven is done. No, he's just sending me like random updates, but I knew I could trust him to do it. I mean it's our passion project, so it's like he's not gonna He's fail not gonna fuck it up on it, you know? And uh and the only thing he did is like his voice is on is on the film with Josh Dobkin's voice. Oh my god, I lost my mind. I lost my mind. So if Josh is listening or watching, there was one point in the movie where he's sitting in the car. What did you write him dialogue? Yeah. He nailed it. No, I wrote it. Nobody I most of the people like he's who it know sounded him, like a talk show. They don't know it's him. He's got a very distinct voice. <laughs> and do I didn't you, know the it was impression. <laughs> Deborah, no. <laughs> Jen, no. Josh is I love Josh Like if If Like <laughs> If Josh didn't have a wife and kid Maybe him him and I could talk And if I wasn't engaged Maybe him and I could talk But he's one of my favorite people in the world But he sounds like Kermit the Frog And Ray Romano had sex And that's kind of like how he talks That's why I want to have him on the show You need to explain that there's like Offspring involved there Because that just sounds like yeah, like, like you're locked they, they outside the room sex while and, then, in and then his voice it. went like that. He seems like the, <laughs> the the devil offspring of Kermit the Frog and Ray Romano. Yeah, um, <laughs> but he just I has. Don't, I don't hear it. I don't hear it as much. I don't hear it as much either. But it, it's it, like I think one point we're out drinking and I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, I don't sound like that. I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> and then it just like stuck, and then we just broke his balls over it. I, I, he's one of my favorite people in the world, so I don't mean that any any disrespect. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it, yeah. It's, but his, but you were, you leaned over in the movie and just kind of like, you got real serious when it started to play. You're like, shh, shh, shh. I don't know if you were kidding, so I just shut the fuck up. And then uh, at that moment, you hit me and you're like, Dobkin. <laughs> then I went, what? And you're like, Dobkin. And I listened, and I was like, and I went, holy shit. And then Victoria's on the other side, she goes, what, what, what? And so I'm the, like, the other voice in that scene is Edwin, is the executive producer slash DP. So, so I, he's the other guy in it. So it's, it's so low, but it's, a, it's minorly like audible. Or yeah. it does, it, is it like some sort of chat show? It's, it's a, it's like, uh, it's a NPR like talk show. He and nailed it. And they're talking about PTSD and stuff. So it's relative to the, to, to the film itself. Really? Yeah. And like, and for you, it's it was so low. the 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 sound was pretty low at the theater there. Well, we, yeah, we, we were sat pretty we were, far back. We were at where they have like WWE events, <laughs> yeah, like the my, like like the local wrestling events, not WWE. Times. But uh, but the, yeah, so like if you see it in like a theater that's really pumping sound at you, like it's pretty easy to hear them in it. And that was like one of the things from them doing the audio session is that like anybody hears the sound of their own voice, they're immediately going to be like, you can't put that in the movie. Is that what he did? And like Edwin had that moment where he's like, I don't Josh want didn't have it. No, Josh, Josh didn't get to, he saw it in the locked picture. <laughs> like, <laughs> he never got to hear the playback no, of his I voice. Never, I, I, I played it back to him a couple of times. It was that, like, oh my God. Oh no. <laughs> He sounds great in it, though. He works out I, great. I didn't. I it never. It, I is, never is picked the, up on the it. music. Kicks up after that, and like so. So uh, Brody, like my my buddy Brody, he came in and did a part for it, and his part is hilarious. And it would and like I it, now after listening to it again, I'm like, this would have ruined that part of the scene <laughs> because he's just getting on there. He's like, I think the problem with kids these days is that uh, you know they they got PTSD from everything. They got PTSD from their first day of high school. Like they're not even you know they don't even get a chance. It's like you know you know what I think is they need a good stiff and then he like cuts them off and he's like <laughs> unfortunately we just lost the the phone call with them. wait that happens yeah in the, in it's, the a, edit? It's, it's in the it's in the that's in the dialogue that's written for that there's so much like random like you don't think about that with the film where it's like there's just are you gonna so do much a, are you gonna do a, you gonna do a commentary and, like a director's movie? commentary yeah yeah i i kind of feel like if i end up doing that have you ever seen the uh Armageddon commentary. It's awesome. With yeah, with Ben Affleck. Oh, and it's he's fucking like, awesome. He's like, yeah, no, I, w- I went up to him and I was like, but I don't think it would work. This why would you? Why wouldn't you just train astronauts to, to drill oil? You know? <laughs> and he's like, shut the fuck up, Ben. He <laughs> <laughs> has that moment, and it's so. They good. talk about whitening his teeth in it too. Oh, just like I got you? the Criterion collection of Armageddon and listen to the the. the they have a Criterion collection. They of have Armageddon? a Criterion collection of Armageddon. I swear to God. Does that count as a? I don't understand Criterion collection. I don't know. I don't know. There's a Criterion I collection of Armageddon. I don't, I don't Armageddon. get how you can like get the red balloon and then also Armageddon. You know, like in like he's a got three-pack. space dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. That's like Josh and I love Michael Bay just because because you, you turn off your brain and you just go along for the ride. I think it's better if you overanalyze the hell out of it. 
So I like the idea of like taking like any point in history and just trying to figure out how that fits into a Transformers film. Like how the how the Transformers <laughs> how the film is a it. commentary on like on like just kind of post industrial Russia, you know? Josh and like, I, Josh and I Josh and I saw Transformers opening weekend when they had all like the, the vehicles at the arc light. They had like Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, like all that shit. And you know the opening sequence where the helicopter lands? Is this the this, this wait, is the is very the first f- Transformers first movie? Very first, and like Josh Duhamel's there, and like it's the it's the Osprey. The Osprey is the oh, one yeah. that lands, the, and then it just the, goes like like with no context, nothing. Just the most dangerous and then aircraft ever built, ever. Boom, boom, and then it cuts to fucking Shia LaBeouf. Like chaos happens, and it cuts to Shia LaBeouf, and has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, and I looked at Josh. It's it's the like Josh and I literally at that moment had like tears in our eyes, like not from laughing. We were (laughs) we were so happy, just like it's the he's back. We're like this is beautiful. This is. Did you see the second one and get like just just it was terrible beat to death. It was terrible. The last one I kind of liked. I feel like the the first Transformers, I was like, this is a movie and it makes sense as a movie. The second Transformers, I was like, well, the this- writer strike happened in the second one. Yeah, I don't know what that was because I was just like, this is like, this is a concrete block of a film. It's not a movie. Like, I don't know what to do with it. Like, no, like it, it, it looks. His movies always look good. like the like the Island, for instance, right? I don't know if you like that movie. I do the like, one with you and McGregor. Like, I do like that movie, but it's to me, it's like two That's separate, more, more dystopian future. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is, but it's too. Jesus must love you. They fell eighty stories. Yeah, <laughs> and Michael Bay in his commentary on the island, he's like, "I know that no one could survive that fall, but that guy's line makes it all all right." Yeah, <laughs> when they fall and they hit all the the construction like this the is nets. The, thing. the dystopian future movie, and uh, like a lot of people, it's like it's my favorite genre of. It's not a genre, but it's like my favorite like kind of theme background. It's a subgenre on iTunes. Okay, well, they have the dystopian future and, movies, and you know, like I'd include a bunch of movies that other people wouldn't include into it. But I'd basically be like alternate futures or freaking alternate yeah. histories, things like that. It's like that dystopian, like. But my favorite, Catherine Bigelow, Strange Days, like that phenomenal w- film. I know, phenomenal film. But it's like you get to the end of that movie, all right, and you get you get to the end of this movie, and it's the most literal ending where it shows you exactly what. Happened is happening at the end of the movie, right? And I point this out to people all the time where I'm like, Watch the movie, it's like his best friend literally stabs him in the back. Literally, I, yeah. I'm not saying it as like a I'm, I'm not a teenage girl that's just like literally dying right now, yeah. <laughs> but literally stabs him in the back. He takes he throws him off the balcony and he grabs onto his necktie, right? So he's hanging on by threads, and then. <laughs> And then he takes the knife from his own back and uses it to cut ties, literally and figuratively, with his ex best friend. <laughs> Who was uh, what's Tom his Sizemore? Name? Tom Sizemore. Yep. Tom Sizemore's the bomb. He is. He's in my favorite movie that's ever been made ever, Bringing Out the Dead. Scorsese movie. He was great in that. A lot of people hate that movie. Er- I, our, I buddy, love that movie. Our, our buddy Ernie's in that. Ernie O'Donnell. He was in Clerks. He was uh, Rick Darris. He and I. Yes, I'd he's in it. Go. He played like he was in like the flat. He was like uh, Patricia Arquette's like high school boyfriend, because there's like a couple of shots or oh, something. Really yeah, he's like I worked with Scorsese. And I'm like, you worked with Scorsese? It's like I'm yeah. bringing out the dead. His, I'm bringing his, out the dead. His lowest performing film. <laughs> I went and saw that in theaters. I thought it was I saw, great. I saw it in theaters. Yeah, and that was one of those ones where like I saw it in theaters. I bought it on like VHS. They, that when tapes were like eighty bucks a piece. No, no, they were cheap then because DVD had already come out. Okay. So there was the DVD, and the DVD was like that stupid snap case where you snap the side, and then it was just a paper cover. You know, oh, like, hated it, hated and, it. Uh, so, and uh, but I can I didn't have a DVD player. I had a VHS player. I had a massive VHS collection. <laughs> so, like, I go and I buy this movie, and like I'm just obsessed with it. And everybody else is like, "This movie sucks," and I'm like, "It doesn't." I'm like, you shut your mouth. It doesn't. I'm like, it's, it's a really got John good movie. Goodman in it. He's amazing. He is like. Ving My Ray, fa- I Ving hate Rames is so so phenomenal, and I love it every every single time you get Scorsese as the, the he, dispatch yeah, guy as the dispatcher. Yeah, yeah. I I so and Cliff Curtis, man, I love Cliff Curtis. Ah, he fucking knocks it out of the park. That's love like, Cliff Curtis. So what's what's so you've been doing the festival circuit for a while now. Like you, yeah. there's there's a lot of accolades. Your buddy was trying to uh, your film fest buddy was trying to remember all of them. How about how he cut you off last night? 
He's, you're like, well, we won this, this, this. And he's like, well, I'll just say the one thing. I'll just do the best director is yeah, going to work best, here. Yeah, I'll just do best director and then instead I'm like, of all the other things. We have, but two for cinematography, you know, like Richmond and... and yeah, like my DP did a good job. Yeah, where the heck was the... It was Richmond and... Oh, and Newport Beach. Newport Beach, we so got what, like the so what, Zeiss Award for cinematography. So what did you win? Like what have like what what festivals have you been in? What have you won? Best best dramatic feature at World Fest. Uh, best director at Phoenix Film Festival. Um, Phoenix, f- like each one of these film festivals have gone to them. They all have their own charm. They all have their like their own things going on. Right. Phoenix is one of those ones where like the way that they program the festival makes it super easy to see every movie that's at the festival. Like if you're a hardcore diehard fan of film, you because it's all in one <clears throat> theater. It's six screens in one theater and they're just running nonstop. So it's, that was great. I saw a ton of movies. Um, then we, we Idlewild film festival, which is like up in the, in the mountains in California uh-huh. is like the location itself is beautiful. They're all about it. The town really kind of, you know, like they, they get in on it and, and like they, they awarded us uh, best, best screenplay. <laughs> and, and which like, there's how many lines of dialogue are in it? None, no, <laughs> and uh, best screenplay and and best feature film. That's we, that's we, pretty. And we're like nominated for everything. But isn't it? But isn't it? Isn't it kind of like strikingly strange that like everyone was like, eh, yeah, nobody's gonna watch that. When that's you go back the, like a year ago or two years ago, that's oh, eight nine years ago. When you go like back nine, first time pitching, when you go back almost a decade ago. Yeah, and people are telling you like nobody's gonna watch it, and now you're getting all these accolades. I mean, there's gotta be some sort of like, yeah, like a little bit of like, uh, the Judd Nelson breakfast club ending still frame. No, I don't think you need that. I feel like the, the most people that aren't like, and, and that's what I've kind of noticed in like the film game is that the people who aren't, who, who are not super supportive, they either have their own thing that they just can't get over, you know, they can't get their own thing off the ground. So then they're not supportive because they really feel like there's no hope. Right. And then the rest of them are, are assholes who, who like they're, you know, they're, they're just assholes. Like people are telling you don't do something just because they think that the art's not worthy or like, that's just, come on, bro. Like, like leave it alone. Art's art. You know, it's like, it's all subjective. If somebody can spend time puking up milkshakes onto a canvas and call that art, then certainly let this kid go make his short film, you know, like don't tell him that there's no point, you know? Do tell him that he doesn't need to go to college to do it, you know? <laughs> um, like, do tell him that. Tell him that he can go and be a PA for, like, a week and learn more than he's than he's going to learn sitting in a lot of those classes. Now, if he wants to be, like, a film theorist or a film critic or, you know, like, all that stuff is, like, all of those things, film historians, things like that, it's, like, you know, the medium hasn't been around for a long, long, long time, but it's, like, how many, you know, like, how many people... How many people does it take to keep track of like every stage play that's ever been written and everything? You know, like you need historians and you need people who understand where it came from and what it has to do with the history that it came from. You know, like what the time and place in which it was written well, was it speaks like to the time period. Yeah, and and if, and and to show that background, <laughs> so it's like you know we're going to end up needing more film historians. We're going to so like film school is great for that sort of thing. Do you think, because I, I think I this, think film school gives you, like, film school makes you think that you know how to use the chainsaw, even though you never touched it the whole time. You just looked at pictures of a chainsaw, and they told you what buttons do what, you know? And it's like, in the chainsaw, being rudimentary, there's one trigger, you know? <laughs> so, right. But it's like, the, the chainsaw is not easy. Like, you're not going to go make a chainsaw sculpture tomorrow just looking at pictures of the sculpture and, 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 a, the, chainsaw. and a chainsaw. Right. You know? It's like, you're going to you're gonna learn that by being there. So people who jump right into it and they're like, I'm going to go and take all this money, you know, from, like, I don't know, grandpa's dentists, inheritance or yeah. something like that. And I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to spend it and I'm going to make a feature. And it's like, go work on some people's sets first. It's like you might not see the best way to do it, but you'll certainly see the ways you don't want to. Right. Sometimes, and this is this is what I what I tell like Stacy every now and again because we've we've all had like the brutal feature film experience. Yeah. And I'm like, that's your that's that's a much better film school than going to film school to oh, see yeah. how not to make a movie or to see how like we've made mistakes and what we're doing like that that's more invaluable than oh, like, than the am, textbooks. <laughs> one of my one of my first like runs as. Uh, as a, as a sound guy and I was on a shoot and I just was filling in for a day 
and I'm not going to say the name of this movie because it's like, but the, it was every single thing was just this director being like, just get it done. Just do it. You know? And they're telling him that this dock is not strong enough to put, put the Fisher dolly on. Right. And he's like, no, just get it done. Just do it. It'll hold. I don't care. Let's That's get it done. That's a heavy fucking dolly. Yeah. Well, it ended up in the Everglades, you know? <laughs> and they had to get like a crane, you know, like tow truck out there to pick it up out of the water. And, and then it's like you, your insurance has to pay for the whole thing to be rebuilt. So it's, like, oh. you know, like it's $280,000 or something like that. It's insane. And it was like, it was just that attitude. And even after that happened, he was still talking like that. He didn't learn a lesson from it. He didn't have any moment where he's like, I need to listen to these people that I hired to tell me the thing so that I don't spend $280,000 to fix a Fisher Dolly, to fix a Fisher Dolly. And then realize that like, after you do that and then you work the crew 19 hours and you have a freaking ca- one car accident that you're also having to pay for. And now you don't get to finish your stupid fucking feature because you already used all the insurance liability that you have. So you do no longer have insurance for the film, Oh, you know? <clears throat> and it's like, it, it, you know, if you're going to, but seeing that and I was like, man, I never want to, I don't want to be that guy. You know, somebody tells me something's dangerous. I want to, I want to take their word for it. You know, somebody, what if somebody, what if somebody tells you it's stupid? Then let's give it a shot anyway. I don't know. What's the, what harm does it do? It's just time. If you don't have the time, then don't do it. But if you've got the time, I don't know. Experiment. That's what it's there for. So what's next for you? I don't know. Hopefully I'm going to just keep reading scripts, try to pick something and try to make something next. Think you want to come here? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd just for the, the variety of looks that you've got. I mean, I definitely, I like, I like the way that the woods look, man. It's all around here, baby. Yeah. It's all around here. I like the... There's, like, there's there's places where the trees are five feet apart, and there's places where the trees are 40 feet apart, and there's... Yeah, and this has got... This is definitely... It's got the right streets, you know, where you can, like, look down, and you've got some symmetry to it, but you've also got a lot of differences in texture, you know, where it's, it's like... It's very... It, it's a very textured area. Yeah. You know? So you don't know... You don't, you don't have anything lined up? No, I mean, I'm going to go work that show, get get my bank account back up, and then, <laughs> then try to figure out what the heck it is. And then drain it again? And then and then go and make another movie. We'll see what happens. I mean, like, it's it, right now it's just, like, figuring out the management, figuring <laughs> out, like, well, the management or agent or something, someone who can put me in the right room, because you can't just go and do it yourself. I've realized that that's not the way that it, it, that that's not the way that it works, that that no solicitation like you know without it's an almost, agent or a manager is, it's actually like they do want you to do that and it's to protect them from you you know <laughs> like <laughs> because for every me that's out there that's like I just want to make another movie you know I've already made this one I can show that it's like I can't I can't I can do it you know yeah. I can make a movie here's yeah. a feature watch it whether you like it or not it shows that I, like it makes it, it's there's nothing I don't understand about it yeah it's you like, know, and I think, and, and you're you're a subtext guy. I think there's a lot of subtext in there that I, that I don't really know. Yeah, we're not going to tell anybody that. They can watch the no, movie. No, you can tell me. In, you are. can tell me in private. But if I can, um, without sounding like you and I are going to end up in a bathtub together, is <laughs> I'm very I'm very proud of you, and I'm and I and I think that you should give yourself a pat on the back for what you accomplished and what you and your friends accomplished, and don't stop because I really I feel terrible that I fell asleep the first time watching because <laughs> because they watched it and the ending is just so like oh yeah he did it but it's so he far away it. from the beginning of it it is but it it makes but it makes total sense yeah but you have to be in like you have to be in a mindset where you're gonna sit down and watch that movie yeah it's not you're not it's it's not it's it's not that's not a mass consumption film no this is not like sit your kids in front of it they'll totally love it type of film no you, know? you don't like, you don't you don't put this on instead of Moana but it's totally it, it I, I feel like I was just trying to make it for the guys that are like that feel like they get treated like they're stupid too often in a movie you know where it's right. like and the thing that they're addicted to is a movie that doesn't hold their hand at all right and I was like ah oh, screw it let's try to do that you know like let's let's do that let's do that movie for those people you know and then everybody else is kind of you know they're if if they don't like it they're okay with it you know like yeah there's not like this visceral I, I, I can't foresee anybody having be like fuck that movie we did we had one review and the review did you really yeah we had one, well we have a bunch <laughs> of reviews but we have one review that was like just the dude was so angry and 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 he's and he's like I mean 
I know I can't expect it to be another blast fighter, but at least it could have give, delivered a little bit of what the trailer showed. What is blast and fighter? He thought that he's like, I saw guns. I figured there would be massive shootouts and things, but no, you know, like and he was very angry about the way that the the film was presented. Is that like those people who are mad that Drive wasn't Fast and, and the Furious? Oh yeah, people. <laughs> we went to the theaters to see that, and I was like, I was like, I love this movie so much. And like halfway through it, people are getting up and leaving the theater. They're super mad. Like some ladies like suing them. And, and I like, saw that. Yeah, That's that what was I was like. Place Beyond the Pines did the same thing, and I feel like that movie is like it's a fantastic film, but it's a three act play. You know, like it's not, it's not your normal film. Like it's three distinct acts with like completely different characters who are all related by like single event type thing. So it's like, are we going to work together in the future? Hopefully I'd love it. Yeah, but we'll get some money and let's do it. All right. Hey, did you have fun today? People in the world. <laughs> if you, what's the address for this place? They can just send the checks here. For the next <laughs> movie. You can find us online. <laughs> yeah. Two, Dude. five, eight studios.com. Yeah, and uh, so if you just got expendable cash that you really, like, that the difference would be that tonight you would use it for Wendy's, but you'd rather give it to us to make a movie, we'll do that. Yeah, we take we'll, it, we'll take we'll fives take and tens. Yeah, we'll put your, <laughs> your name in the credits um, as, what do you give, what do you give people when it's like the... The, the peace of mind. Do you just, like, producer? Co-producer? No, no. What, do, what, do people get, what do people get in return for donating to the Red Cross? They're investing in good feelings. Mm. I've paid money to see. I've paid money to, for shit that because I just want to see it. You know what I mean? I think they should get something. I mean, special thanks, I guess, is what normal we, people get. We, like that, we, we should send everyone a box. Of no, that was the Adam Rifkin thing. The directors got a fully crowdfunded <clears throat> film, fully crowdfunded. And in that one, they're all listed as producers, but it's seriously like a, cro- a rolling credits over the end of, and it's like Pendulette his rock band playing a song and there's just names and names and names of every single person who donated. They did that to the special editions of the Lord of the Rings trilogy on the, on the Blu-rays. People donated to make that movie or no, that's just all the special thanks. It was everybody who was part of like, uh, the one ring.net or something or anybody who like emailed them to say thank you or something. Like everybody got Yeah but I mean there. These are people that actually Like they donated 10 bucks They donated 50 bucks They donated You know like they Yeah I know they forget. That's the thing I think is it, there, there are websites Where you can Where you can Invest money Into a film Yes Now Yes Many Yes And, and they're that's, growing That's what those should be Because I The thing I hate you, About you Kickstarter like Is when I give I don't like giving the gift I'm like, if I'm going to back you, I'm going to back you because I think it's a sound business experience. If it's an art project, for sure. I want a gift. I'll, I'll give it to you. No, that I'll give to you. Like, I'll just give you some money. Don't give me anything. Just right. make the art. Yeah. You know? But if it's your thing where you're like, I'm making this short film. It's about blah, 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 blah. And the only thing that I hear in the blah, 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 blah is, is like, I really, really need a director's reel. I really, really need to show off this, like that I can do this, this and this because I really want to direct this feature that I have written or I want to, you know, do this TV show or I, ri- you know, it's like, and all this stuff. It's like, I'm not helping you with that. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not helping you with that. Like if you called me up and you were like, I want to borrow stuff, but what I'm using it for, I'm going to make money. And I'm like, you can't borrow shit. No, you got to pay, you got to pay the rental. pay me. <laughs> It's like, if you want to borrow stuff because this is going to like festivals and you're going to wander around with it and stuff like that, it's like, I'll show up. It's like, I won't work for free. I'll do a pickup day for free. I'll do a half day for free. You get like one per like idea, you know, (laughs) one half day. And I've given it like Adam Green and and Will Barrett and those guys, like I'll give them it like, I'll give them full days. But that's because it's like, I don't know. Because I like them more than the rest of you. No, I mean, it's like, fuck you, Zach. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Do you want to yeah. end on that? <laughs> no, no. No, I'll give them a full day here and there, but that's like, I mean, heck, Will Barrett kept money in my bank account forever. You know, like that dude got me my start, and, and I've learned a lot just from, oh man, just watching him suffer through some really terrible <laughs> stuff where I was like right beside him going like, is this happening right now? We're doing this? Like... You believe this shit where it's like hour 18 and they're like, oh, we got to move to the next location. It's like, <laughs> like, all right, you know, and then I'm like, you know, I'm going to do it. But then when I, when I send in that invoice, it's going to be, you know, like, I'm not going to tell you how much money that costs now, <laughs> you know, like you'll just get the bill and then you're, and then you're going to throw a fit and like, 
and but the problem is you don't have the power anymore, you know. <laughs> da- but it's like I don't know why people. Yeah, we just we've worked on some really just terrible <laughs> things. And then when, some of it's not even it's not even terrible. Like I'll actually put up with a director or producers or things like that when they got a lot of heart for the project, right? And like I'll just put up with it being really really terrible. I do get kind of depressed being on that because it's just like when somebody's all about it and they think it's going to be the game changer and yeah. you're, and you're watching like <clears throat> that the monitor going like, Ugh. you're watching that monitor and you're, you're like, yeah, this is, this is not what you think it is. But then like doing other ones where it's like, but it's, I feel like it's even worse when you're doing one where it's like, no you, one realizes it's going to be great. No one realizes it's going to be great. They're just like, this is just another thing. Let's just, let's just get it done. <laughs> You know, and you're like, there's genius here that you guys are squandering because you have no idea that you're, you know, like, and, <laughs> and if you try to pump them up on it and they're like, I'm not falling for that shit again, bro. Like, <laughs> I won't be hurt again. Um, we have to end. Fine. I'm happy you came here though. I'm happy I went and picked you up. I'm happy I spent the gas. I'm happy that chicken Caesar salad destroyed my lower GI. It's terrible. I don't know what was in that. that like, I don't either. Up. I don't either. I think you're allergic to arugula. I might be allergic to Caesar dressing <laughs> or a crouton. That's Who the fuck vinegar. knows? You'd be like allergic to everything. <laughs> I'd be allergic to everything. Thank you, man. Well, Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I, I will always have you. Let's make a movie. Let's do it. Let's make, um, I'm going to wait and cut everything until you take a sip of your first water. <sighs> Fantastic. That's it. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>